It is important that the Home Secretary has finally got there and made a U-turn, but there are some issues. We don't really know the details of the compensation that's going to be offered to people. I mean, how, how do you put a price on not being able to come back to your own country? There are two theories about what's gone on here. One is it's cock-up that in an attempt to clamp down on illegal immigration, which many people in Britain felt strongly about, that people simply went too far without considering the implications. And the second alternative theory is far more sinister, which is actually they knew exactly what they were doing, and there was a, a tinge of racism to all this, and they didn't care if people in the Windrush generation got swept away in the way that they have. Where do you sit on these two theories. My view is that there's been a race to the bottom on immigration. It's all been about targets, it's all been about deporting people, and it's not been about humanity. People were warned, they were warned, that this could happen to British nationals who were here, and they were indifferent, they didn't care. They weren't, we weren't important enough. You know, a few Caribbean people, what's the news here? They're well into their 60s, what's the problem? And I, I'm just really heartened that as the British public has looked at this more and more and more, and the emails that I've received really confirm this, they've been horrified that the, you know, the, the people that they know and feel so close to are heroes, people like Trevor MacDonald, Lenny Henry, Beverly Knight. These kinds of people and their families have been caught up in this absolute nightmare of course they're British. They were always British. You were told not just that you had no right to live here in the UK, despite the fact you did, mm -hmm. but you were sent to a detention centre yeah, and booked on a flight to Jamaica. So mm. you were one of those people who was about to imminently be deported. Most definitely. An absolutely awful experience. The Home Secretary yesterday said, firstly, you've got British citizenship. That's, mm. that's what you're going to be granted, which you presumed you had. Yep. And secondly, that you're going to be given compensation. Mm. How does someone compensate a man like you who has been through the threat of deportation back to a country that you hadn't lived in? Oh, that is a hard question. I don't know myself, so I don't know how she's going to um, come to that. Conclusion as right. I still don't as we nothing. sit here, and the, the reason why I went to go to Paris was to visit my mum. My mum being sick for two years. How long do I wait to go and see her? Dijon, this is your this is your dad, right? Yeah. You have a British passport. Correct. He doesn't. Yeah. You're apparently British. He's not. Uh, I don't know how that works out. Well, what do you think about all this? I think um, to be fair, I think it's um, it's disgraceful. Um, for example, my, my dad's been here since he, for 52 years. Mm. Um, I've been on this country for 33 years and I've got a British passport. He's paid taxes longer than I've been born, but he's not considered British. I'm considered British. Mm. I can fly back and forth as many times as I want and he can't. Um, and when he was sent to, an, to a detention centre, yeah, right, twi twice, your, your dad was basically put in a cage by this country and told, you're not British, you're not welcome here, we're sending you home. Four weeks prior to him going to the detention centres, my brother passed away and he was buried. So the, we were dealing with the stress of my brother passing, we were dealing with this, we were, we were grieving. And then you family. get hit with this. And then we get hit with the fact that my dad's, I've got, my dad's supposed to be coming around to my house and now he's um, in a detention centre being shipped off. Do you remember um, when the go home vans uh, were driven around. Oh, yes. Was there a sense then amongst people from your generation of, we don't have the documents to prove there was we're not those of, people? There was a lot of people hiding in fear. After the huge contribution of West Indian and Caribbean people to this country, that we're still having a debate in 2018 about whether we're British. I mean, of course we were British. We were part of the British Empire. We arrived here as British. And to lock people up, to deport them, to deny them health care, for people to have lost jobs. And really, in the end, no one has really taken responsibility. There's been a big U-turn, but no one has taken responsibility. 
it's been a really, it's really sort of soured my sense of politics and how we treat people. Do you think that people's heads should roll here? I mean, Diane Abbott has called for wholesale changes. Do you think that uh, Home Secretary Amber Rudd should be considering her position? What about the Prime Minister, whose fingerprints are all over the implementation of this hardline, hostile environment policy? All I can say is that I've been a minister in the government, and if I had been responsible for the pain that we're hearing, I certainly would have stepped aside. I would have fallen on my sword. I'd have been so embarrassed with myself and what I had been responsible for. We used to do the honourable thing. We seem no longer to be bothered. They're already British citizens. They don't need Amber Rudd to tell them who they are. He's lived here 52 years in this case, Anthony. He doesn't need the Home Secretary to remind him he's British. I thought Britain was my country, and to be told it's not is very upsetting. If the Home Office... I know you're watching, right? Because you're watching and you're hiding and you're <coughs> cowering, you don't want to have the conversation. Get this man sorted today. Get him on a plane so he can see his ailing mother that you have stopped him seeing for two years. That's what your policies have done. You've stopped a British man going to see his mother before she dies. How, how can this even be humane? What is wrong with you people? Sort it out. I mean, I can't even listen to these stories without my blood boiling. I've watched your blood boiling as you've been erupting with mm. justifiable rage and thank God for someone like you and in the House of Commons. I know you've experienced a backlash even as a result of that because you've tweeted some of the horribly racist stuff that you've received mm even as you campaign for this generation? Well, these things always pull very nasty people out the woodwork. Where do we go from here, Piers? Look, I, I hope that all of them get their passports. I hope that we finally settle this question. We're all British. This is a multi-ethnic country with a long, long history and you know, whatever the colour of our skin, we're all British, so they all need their passport. And there are some issues for other Commonwealth citizens. It wasn't just Caribbean people that came after the Second World War. You know, there's another group of people there from places like Ghana and Nigeria and Africa. Many of them work in security, work as traffic wardens, those sorts of people and they're experiencing a very, very similar pain and hardship. So I just hope that we look again and think again about this hostile environment policy. There well, I can are tell you real people behind this. I can tell you who's going to get a very hostile environment, the Home Office, if this doesn't get resolved. Yeah. Anthony Bryan and your family, if this doesn't get resolved, we're going to turn you, the Home Office, into a very hostile environment. So I would recommend you get this sorted and the other people in this kind of position. It is a national disgrace.